Well, good morning again, and welcome again to another one of my podcasts. I know I say good morning, and sometimes you are watching this, and it's not morning, but, uh, well, tomorrow morning, have a good morning. Well, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a hymn that was uh, written back in the 1800s. It was a hymn that was entitled, He Arose. And the reason I wanted to talk to you about this hymn and uh, is the Easter season is upon us. And this year it's kind of come around uh, a little earlier. It come around on April 4th this year. And, uh, of course, we're not even in April. Uh, well, I'm recording this uh, podcast, but uh, I've been thinking about this hymn. In fact, I sang it last uh, Sunday, last large day, uh, and the reason I sang it, it's a song of victory. Christ had won the great battle at the cross of Calvary. He defeated our foes uh, when he went to the cross, besides uh, paying the penalty for our sins. Well, I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about this hymn, and I am going to uh, share a little bit with you uh, I found uh, the information on this author on the internet, and uh, I found it at this uh, this uh, blog post uh, following Jesus. And the author of this a blog post had gotten the hymn from, or the story about the hymn from a couple other websites, uh, and he indicates this on it. Uh, his website is called Following. Uh, Jesus Camp uh, blog dot com, and uh, as the story goes, uh, the history of the hymn "Low in the Grave He Lay." That was the very first uh, verse uh, of this hymn, or Christ arose. The words and the music were written by Robert uh, Lorry in uh, eighteen. 20, he lived in 1826 and died in 1899. He died the year my father was born, uh, in 1899. But the hymn was published in 1874. Now, uh, Robert uh, Lowry uh, was born in Philadelphia in 1826. And as a teenager, he was uh, active in uh, teaching Sunday school, as well as uh, uh, serving in the chorus of his church. Uh, for college, uh, Robert attended the University of uh, Lutenburg, Pennsylvania, at uh, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's now called uh, Bucknell University. And he graduated uh, there with highest honors. He began working as a pastor as well as uh, a professor of literature. Yeah, as time went on, according to the uh, his uh, biograph uh, uh, of the gospel songs and hymn writers, it is said that uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lowry was a man of rare administration abilities, uh, a more uh, a more excellent pastor, as through uh, Bible studies, and whether in the pulpit or upon the platform, always a brilliant and intelligent speaker. He was a uh, I'm not sure if I can even pronounce this, this word here. It's a G-E-N-I-A-L, general and pleasing uh, disposition. And the high sense of honor was one of his striking characteristics. A very few men had the great ability in uh, painting pictures uh, from the imagination. He could thrill an audience with his vivid descriptions and inspire others 
with some through his inspiration. Well, according to his, uh, the information that we have on him, he was a brilliant man and uh, very talented. Uh, and he was the author of this hymn. While preaching, Robert, uh, main work, for many years, he always had a deep love of music. Yeah. In time, he began dedicating more effort to music, and by the end of his life, he had written dozens of popular hymns and tunes, such as uh, Here, uh, Here is Love, I Need the Every Hour, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. A lot of these hymns we sing today. Uh, Shall We Gather at the River? And we're marching to Zion. You know, uh, these hymn writers, God, I believe, raises these men up to uh, to bless us and to add to our worship of the Lord. In some of these old hymns, uh, you you just you don't find them today. I mean, there's some great hymn hymn writers today, uh, but it seems like you can see the heart of the hymn writer in the hymns that they write and how they love God. And I know there are people that love God today, but I'm just, maybe I'm just uh, more uh, inclined to love the old hymn writers uh, because I'm not a young man myself anymore. And I just love to sing these old hymns and uh, this is the kind of music that really blesses my heart. You know, there's a saying that uh, uh, music speaks to our souls, and I believe it does. I really do. And uh, I'm so glad that God raised these men up to to do these hymns. I got the hymn book in, in front of me right now. Got to get a hold of it here. In the words to this hymn, it says, Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus, my Savior, Waiting that coming day, Jesus, my Lord. And then the song gets real emotional. Up from the grave he arose, With a mighty triumph for his foes. He rose a victor of the dark domain, And he lives forever with his saints to reign. You know, these hymn writers, uh, that, that these words that were given, I believe they were given right from God. Vainly he watched his bed. Vainly they watched his bed. Jesus, my Savior. Vainly they sealed the dead. Jesus, my Lord. But then he says, up from the grave he arose. And then the last stanza, death cannot keep his prey, keep his prey. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, from the grave he arose with a mighty victory for his foes. He rose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to isn't that a beautiful hymn? I was so blessed when I read it and sang it. It's a song of victory, and that's what Easter's all about. He defeated the last foe, and that was death. He conquered it all, and then he said it's finished when he died. The work was done, and to prove the work was Done and complete, he rose from the grave. The resurrection, to me, proves that everything that is said about Jesus is true. That he truly was God in the flesh. It says this about him, And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten, full of grace and truth. I want to leave you with that thought today, and I just want you to have a great day. Lord bless. Until next time.